Come and help me move back into my camper van. That's right, I'm loading the van up for a big adventure. In fact, it's my first adventure since quitting my job and becoming a full-time social media creator. I hate the word influencer. We've got a whole list of things to do and we've only got a, basically a few hours to do it in. You see, I'm actually going away in three days. Today being the afternoon where I can finally get a load of stuff back into the van. Tomorrow, we're down at Dubbed Out Community just for a bit of a social gathering sort of thing. And then Tuesday, we've got a date day with Danielle because while I'm not working now, I can start repairing my relationship. So we're going out on a date day. It's probably simply just gonna be go to the beach, get a Morrison's meal deal and just chill out, have some time together because that's one big thing we lacked when I was working full time. I've got my clothes there to go into the overhead locker up there that's already open. I've got the collapse. Because I haven't got my water tank installed, I've got no running water in the van. So the collapse is a water container that collapsed into virtually nothing. That's gonna be highly valuable. And they've also sponsored this video, more on them slightly later. Now it probably doesn't seem like an exciting video. Oh, packing the van up to go away. But all this sort of stuff is all van stuff and that all came out of my old van. Even like right down there, I've got me um, water tank, I've got some bits over there, some more bits up there, my water heaters over there, all my plumbing and all that sort of stuff just there. I've got loads of stuff down that end of the camper van to uh, rearrange and organise. That's all my work stuff that I've got to take back to work. So I'm just going to chuck that in the garage. We've got me hiking bag. I've got to chuck that in the garage too, just to get it out of the way from in here, so to speak. I've got ping pong stuff to play with my son, so I need to so sort of figure out where to put that and a few general tools i need to find more tools to be able to go in this van stuff like if i get a puncture i need to have the jack and i need to have the right wrenches and all that sort of stuff plus a few extra essentials because this is the first big adventure van life adventure we're actually doing well that is since we've got it all converted so far i am truly truly in love with all this furniture can't wait to get the rest i mean just look at this kitchen pod just here now granted it's going to have the marble worked up the fridge is in place, but that really does need a clean. I'm going to regret doing this, but I'll open it and show you. Feel free to slate me in the comment section down below. This stuff has been in this fridge and it stinks and it's currently 28 degrees outside. Probably only 24 and I'm over exaggerating, but this is going to stink. This stuff's been in there for like a month. I mean, it's not too, too bad. Just needs a damn good clean. Just got to find places for everything. So like me cleaning stuff, me brushes and stuff, me filming equipment. I've got to find places for that. Steel toe cap boots. I'm never going to use them again. So I'm just going to store them, I think. This is going to be a real sort of shakedown of the van. See whether the LED lights up there are actually bright enough with, along with the lights that we've got underneath these over, over counter lights. Because if you don't know, we didn't put any ceiling lights in this van. And that's because in the last van build we did, the budget one, we never used them. It was a, such a stress to put them up there and we never actually used them. So what do we do? Well, we just didn't put them in this one. The last budget build was all really white, bright furniture, just like those back doors, which I really do need to change. It's a little bit darker now. We've got all this slate gray Vans Adventure furniture and the gray suede headliner. It's gonna be interesting to see how it all comes out. I've got all my filming stuff, I've put that away. I need to get a new mount for the top of that because the only one I can find is my GoPro mount. I've definitely got to secure me uh, 400 amp hours of lithium ion batteries in place. Just the simple that holding them down isn't enough. That's gonna be a job when I go down to see Neil from Dub Dark Community. That just means I've got a trip to being q to do. I managed to dig out some stuff, but I'm gonna to have to proper spend some time in that room to properly get everything that I need. I've got the camping stove down there, with the air tire pump. I still can't find the ratchet to get the wheel nuts off. I know where the locking wheel nuts are, just not where the actual ratchet is. Toolbox, because you can guarantee something's gonna go wrong. It's meant to rain while we're away, just like it looks like it's gonna properly be stormy right now. We've got the hiking jacket with the hiking pole, the Trellino composting toilet, that's something I'm quite excited to use. We've got some more cleaning stuff for the fridge. Proper keeping a weather watch because I've got a lot of clothes on the washing line. Don't want them to get wet. <laughs> Look at me sounding domesticated. How am I gonna get that? Bike, water tank, clothes, mattress, Max Van Dome, RC fabrics, and it's there. Is it worth going without a cup of tea? Nope. That can wait until tomorrow, but I found another gas bowl for that little gas stove, so I'm taking that with me. Watch me live off pot noodles. Got the rest of me clothes in before it choked it down, but I'm going to have to rethink me clothing strategy, because those two down the end is all I dedicated for the clothing. I don't have a lot, they're full, and I've even got hoodies on that side up there. Rethink a jiggery, I think. One thing that was bugging me about this wheel on the back, that's the spare wheel on the back of the van. 
these metal ridges that poke out two of them were coming out slightly only on this wheel not on the actual ones that are actually on the van just those ones so i sent a dm to rogue alloys on a sunday night and shown them a picture on sunday night and they, they messaged me straight back they told me how to sort that out now rogue alloys you've got a lifetime warranty with them but he also noticed from the picture that that nut there and that nut there they're the nuts you wouldn't do to get to the actual wheel nuts that are in there he said they're rusty we had a bad batch of them so we'll send you a load of new ones out along with a bit of merch as an apology so i can't wait for that to arrive i went out to bnq this morning picked up a few bits and pieces got my hiking boots put them in so i've got some screws i've got ratchet strap that's to strap the batteries down some of the roads i'm going down next week i'm gonna need that i have got some eyelet bolt things to secure them down i have no idea whereabouts they've gone but they're somewhere got some wood that's for the shower floor that's not for now they were there it was a bargain it was an off cut being you special one pound got these two ridges i'll show you what i'm going to do with them because i might actually have a go at doing that tonight that's something to do with the back doors that box just there is the air fryer my new air fryer but first Oof. I'm going to nip down to see Neil down at Dub Dad Community. It's about half an hour drive away. Probably have a bit of a social, see what he's up to, and probably get his advice on some stuff. This drive's always quite cool because it's just like a bit of motorway, a bit of country lanes, and you just sort of switch off and you just dawdle. But I've come up with a thought, and I don't know whether it's a thing or not, or whether it's something that I might actually start doing. You know how, like, in the UK we've got Truck Fest, People basically just park their nice modified trucks in a big massive field and people go there and just look around them and stuff like that. There's a few little events, sometimes they have like robot wars on and there's a coffee machine. Or like in America, you've got like cars and coffee where they take their nice cars out, there's a little coffee bar and it's just a social gathering of people with nice cars. But anybody's allowed to go and just have a look around the cars and stuff like that. How do, do they do that for camper vans? Shall we start a camper vans and coffee morning? every like once a month just a camper van and coffee morning somewhere get a load of people in nice camper vans or diy camper vans a few brands there to sort of show off their products and stuff like that i don't know to me that's I, i've never heard of anything like that i reckon that'd be quite cool to be fair i don't know let me know your thoughts on that because is that something we can start i don't know neil's the, definitely the person to speak to about that he's got the contacts he's got the knowledge he's been doing it for years that's uh, neil from drug down community yeah i'll ask him when i get there i mean he already does a couple of nice weekend camp out said we've got a cracking uh, dubbed out community festival coming up that's absolutely amazing i'm really looking forward to that they've got like friday night they've got uh, tribute bands on and stuff like that a proper big stage and it's gonna be it's basically like a bit of a music festival on the saturday night we've got real bands e17 uh, there's just loads of stuff check check out their facebook page dubbed out community um, i'll leave it linked in the description actually um, the next camp out i think is inglenook uh, that's actually sold out i think i think there's over 500 vans going to that one that's just a weekend camp out where everyone basically gets together and has a massive social it's great the festival i don't think that's sold out yet that's down at the east cheshire showground he'll definitely have some information on whether this is actually a thing or not you can hear the van rattling around a bit that's because i've recently chucked in a load of stuff into the units and every time it's a bump it's going so i'm definitely going to have to put some sort of uh do you know the anti-slip bubble sort of stuff put that in the bottom of the units and then everything banging up and down while i'm driving that'll just it just won't rattle then or I can do like proper nice fault sort of dividers. I don't know. It's all a learning curve. That's what this I'm preparing for now, going away to the Lake District to see how the van copes, to see what I need to do to it and to see what basically falls apart. It's nice to get there and see what they're doing to their crafters because they're converting it totally different to what I convert it. So it's nice to see their sort of way of doing it. They don't have a Max Fan Deluxe. They don't need one i like this front piece on the bumper on the newer crafters where it's a bit black mine's pure white so i wouldn't mind doing that to mine to be fair i kind of like the look they've gone for the double glazing windows inside their camper vans whereas mine is just a single piece of glass i'm going to get condensation they're not there's a plastic mine's glass i don't know let me know which one you think is a better style they're the only two real styles that you can get when you're converting a camper van the double glazing or the single glazing it's nice to see all the other vws that we're here everyone just hanging around helping them out convert their camper vans they're currently at the stage where they're rushing to get all the insulation done so that the units can get fitted uh, tomorrow 
I think it's tomorrow. While I'm sat here for a minute, I've got to strap my batteries into place. When I last come back from Norfolk, I noticed this battery had shifted. So I stuck this little budget sort of a hook there and just hooked it in. That's nice and stable, but it's not adequate. Let's face it, if I didn't do it, I thought it went wrong. These, are, If I had a crash, they'd just shoot off. So we've got to strap them. I've gone for a ratchet strap setup and I've got two big eyelets. So I'm going to get these eyelets and basically one here, one over there or on the floor over there or something, and then ratchet strap them in place really tightly. And now they're not going anywhere. Screwed directly through that wood into the actual floor. Same on the other side. And the batteries are solid. We're now back and I need to fill up the collapse. So while I do this, let me tell you all about it. The collapse is a collapsible water container for any adventure that you want to go on. Whether it be camping, caravanning, camper vanning, anything. It collapses down when it's empty to virtually nothing. So it's easy to store. You take the lid off to be able to open it all up and the air just gets in it, straightens it all out nicely. You've got a clear guide on the side to tell you exactly how much water you've got in there and it's built with really strong materials so it's gonna last you a lifetime. On the top, in the built-in storage, you've got your tap. You unscrew the solid ring from the side and then screw on the tap. That's where you're gonna be getting your water from. Nice and simple, hand tight, and it won't leak. Fill it full of as much water as you can possibly fit in it, or as much water as you need to have inside it, which again, you can check from the clear slit all the way down the side. Because you've got this on the top, airflow, pull that up when you want to use it. The flow will be so much stronger because air is getting into the actual container. Really heavy, juicy handle, so you can really lift 20 litres of water. It's attached to the actual bucket really, really firmly. And the material on the side is really secure that basically means it's not going to break and it's going to last you forever you can lift it up meaning you can take this absolutely anywhere whether you're going camping caravanning camper vanning it will suit every single purpose you can even link two of them together if you find one's not big enough or your circumstances have changed and you need more just get another one you can link them both together if you're sat outside your camper van having a barbecue you want a drink of water you want some water on site just bring it outside sit it down next to you you've got it just there slight little thing for you don't fill it full of vodka and have a party. Time for some punch. <laughs> and what's more, it comes in a variety of different colours, shapes and sizes. I'll leave all the links down in the description down below. That's what they're called, collapse. It's really helped me out on this adventure solely because I haven't got my water tank installed yet. I've got no plumbing in this van whatsoever just yet. And that's because we're waiting for the worktop to come so that we can have the induction hob fitted in, we can have the sink fitted in. As soon as they're fitted in and the shower is actually com completed, then we can start adding all the plumbing in. That's gonna be a good video, so make sure you subscribe for that. And even when my water tank is in and I've got my shower working and everything's all plumbed in, I'm still gonna keep it in the garage, collapsed down, because it takes next to no space. It's got a strap over it to be able to keep it nice and secure. You can tuck it anywhere and I can use that if we're having a barbecue outside or if the kids are here and we wanna go outside or even if we go for a little walk and we're gonna sit down and have a picnic. That can just sit in your backpack. I'll fill it up a little way and collapse it down so it's nice and full. Still won't take up any space. That's the collapse. Coming up to 10 o'clock at night, let me turn a light on just so you can see where we're at. Oh, I've got it, there we go. Dimmer switch is best thing ever. I've cleaned the fridge out. There wasn't that much in there, but I've still got a nasty smell. So it's night time. I'm just going to pack this in the fridge, leave it overnight. And then tomorrow, give it a good scrub. I really, really need to get into the mindset that I'm now a full-time social media creator because I'm literally just going around having fun with a few camper van friends. Granted, it's working. It's having fun, but then again, I've been working so long, so I shouldn't really be that hard on myself. I'm having a good time. This week, when I'm going away into a special place that I absolutely love, I can't wait for that. You watch the content explode, then subscribe to see that massive adventure. Plus, it's going to be the first shakedown of this whole van, so it's going to be interesting to see if anything really falls over. I mean, I've done about 800 miles with all this already in, but it's going to be full of loads of other stuff as well. Like it's gonna have all my personal belongings in it, it's gonna have all my cooking equipment in it, it's gonna have everything you could possibly imagine. So it's gonna be interesting to see how 
it fades, how it, how it goes o over that time. The fridge has been soaking overnight now, so it should be ready for just a wipeout. Then we've got to check the cables in the back room, see whether they're long enough to reach the fuse box. If they're not, we might have to adjust it. It's been date day because it's my last day before I head off on the van life adventure. And the one thing she wanted to do, believe it or not, go find a stool. That was the last, that, that's the one thing she wanted to do all day. We need to find a stool so that she can get her little legs up onto the bed. <laughs> and do you know what? She found the biggest one she could find that folds away in the smallest sort of size possible. So yeah, see how this fridge is doing. It's been in all night long and it looks like it's done the job because the grime really does look like it's picked up and off. I did manage to pick up loads of stuff for the weekend while we were traipsing around the shops looking for that stall though. I love how everything just comes out of this fridge. I don't even know the brand of the fridge. It's uh, Owl G Adventure. It's basically the cheapest 85 to 90 litre fridge that I could find at Jackson's Leisure. And I love the fact we've got a cool little 10 litre freezer at the top of the massive fridge. I've started putting a few bits and bobs in the actual drawers. They've got that bits in. This drawer will change. It's just odds and sods. And the only reason that's going to change is because I found my old cutlery drawer. Dug out loads of stuff that I need from out the back storage and been able to sort of bring it in the van. We'll sort out places for all that to go eventually. I keep saying I'll sort this out. I'll sort that out. <laughs> I always leave it to the last minute. Right, let's dig those cables out. They're going to be down there somewhere, and I've got to try and get them over to the fuse box over here. But yesterday, while I was down at Dubbed Out Community, I ordered a big 90-odd litre water tank to go stationary straight up on that back wall. My only concern is I don't know if my water inlet pipe is actually going to fill it from the top. I think it might be too low. I don't know. We'll see that when it comes. Subscribe to see if I've messed up with those measurements. So the cable wasn't actually long enough for me to run the fridge directly to the fuse box. So it's a job for tomorrow, solely because the cable I've got to use is this stuff. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think it's uh, thick enough and I don't want to take a risk with this fan. However, what I have found is the control panel for the old diesel heater that I used to have. And the positive cable for it is uh, the perfect size. I don't have too much of it, but I'm going to basically chop that up tomorrow and see if that's enough to run a positive and negative through to the fuse box. If it is, bonus. If it's not, I'm going to have to nip to the electrical shop before I go on my journey tomorrow. It's not the end of the world, me having to do that, solely because I've got other stuff to do tomorrow. I've got to go get the last bit of me shopping. I've just got loads of... Uh, or I've got a morning of buttoning up a few little bits and pieces, go and get some fuel, you know, the normal sort of stuff. I'm so excited. The problem I've found is... I've been looking on Google Maps, what do I want to do? There's so many things in the Lake District that I want to do, which is where I'm actually going to go. Uh, if, so if you do see me kicking around in the Lake District, make sure you pop over and say hello, because I've also found my stickers, so you get a free sticker out of it. Plus, it'd be nice to meet all of you guys, but there's too many options for me now, and I'm like, I want to go, oh, yeah, I'm dead like keen to get out there and do it. So I think I might start like around Coniston sort of area, Make me way up to Ool's Water, solely because I need to go to Penrith at the end of this adventure. If, I don't know when that'll be, but with it, sometime within the next two weeks, I have to get to Penrith to drop off all my work stuff back at my work depot. That's it. Today is the day. Today is the day the van life starts for me. I can't wait. Got a few little bits to do on the van first, though. I grabbed some more basic essentials out of my old kit that I need. You know, just a, a bit more extra food, uh, my hat, my gloves. I found my head torch, my sun cream, that sort of stuff. I've got to go and sort of disassemble all this wiring so that I can utilise and recycle that wiring because I love recycling and then um, wire in the fridge, make sure that's working and then load it up with all the food, go food shopping. I've got stuff in here that I want to do. So like these cables here, they dangle down and go back up over there. They're for the over cab locker. So I want to secure them up out the way. So if the toolbox moves, it's not going to rip the cables out of the fuse box. I've got all my breakdown stuff. So I've got my jump leads, my jack, I've got my tire wrench, my diagnostics tool. I even found my air pump, my paddle boarding gear and my campfire gear. And I've got a wire in the screen for the Renergy shunt. There's the positive and negative for the fridge. And this cable just here is the cable that I was going to use. You can see the massive difference in cable size compared to them both. And then you compare it to the old diesel heater cable size and it's an absolute perfect match. So in theory, it's just snip these ends off because I want different ends. Do that on the positive and the negative. 
connect them both up together with heat shrink now yes the negative is on a red cable but i'm just going to tape it black it's all i've got in this little short space of time i've added another fuse onto the positive cable there's already one coming out the fridge this is just an extra backup then just a very simple connect it to the fuse box we've got to put the fuse in first then we'll go check the fridge and see if it's actually worked and we go down and boom it's actually worked now these are set to let's have a look uh so that's set to five that's the fridge and that's set to minus 18 we need to change that uh, i'll go down to oh no we want it a bit higher than that uh we'll go to minus 15 for now we can always try it so now that's the fridge using a lot of power to be able to cool it down to the right temperature when it's at the right temperature being just a 12 volt fridge and being only powered by solar at the minute, the sun is actually cooling that down to the right temperature. It'll just knock on and off as and when. It's highly insulated, so it doesn't use that much power at all. And with only 10 minutes of cable management, we've managed to trap, strap the cables with cable ties across that back beam. That's all tucked up nicely. We've even installed the Renergy shunt. That was just a cable from there straight into the Renergy shunt. We've wound it all behind the back of the batteries and just left it there for now. Eventually, the Renergy shunt is gonna go on a plinth that's directly above that fridge just there it's going to go there along with the solaris the water heater controls all that sort of stuff They're going to be hidden away nicely but look at how well the fridge is doing we're on minus 13 in the freezer and 12 on the fridge it's only been turned on for 10 minutes too with everything packed away now it's all we've got to do is go for a shower before i go because my shower's not working at the minute so i want to be clean ish i've got me supply of baby wipes but and i'm probably going to be jumping in a lake or two while i'm away but while we're doing that, I need fuel, I need food, and then we can go. I was lucky. Neil's just phoned me just as I'm about to leave the petrol station and said, any chance you can come down, I need your help for a few minutes. Their furniture builder just wanted to grab a few measurements to see how Vans Adventures had actually tackled the curvature of the van with the furniture, just to make these ones look extra special. They're really cracking on with the build. We even got to see them drill out the Truma exhaust. Tune in next time because that's when the adventure truly begins. We've got waterfalls, paddle boarding on the lakes, mountainous hikes. We've got giant caves it's gonna be absolutely amazing what an absolute gem of a place this is oh, i love the lake district if you're new around here please subscribe